Hi, this is Scott with Android Guys. I'm here with Luke. Hello. Luke, you have been playing with something interesting. Yes. Something that I have no experience with. Uh Uh-huh. But I'm very curious because you've had some experience with these types of things before. Yes. And own some. Yes. And uh, this is the first from a company dipping their toes in this water. Yeah. Uh, So let's stop burying the lead. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Luke is going to share his review or opinions, findings Mm -hmm. of a 3D printer. Yeah. From Anchor. Yeah. It's the Anchor Make M5. Uh, and so this is uh, Anchor Make. Uh, it's the first for, foray into 3D printing for them. Mm-hmm. Um, they did it through Kickstarter. It was um, the most successful, most funded 3D printer in Kickstarter history. Really? Yeah. Um, and uh, we were lucky enough to get a chance to review um, this unit that we got was a uh review unit of the retail um version so uh the kickstarter versions have been sent out and then there were a couple of uh kind of press review units Mm -hmm. that were still kind of beta um from uh from my understanding the this one that i have is what the retail one will be okay uh so this is the final final version, final copy. Um, and uh, I'll get into all the ups and downs and, and specs and all that. But uh, overall, uh, this printer is impressive. Yeah? Yeah, it's very good. Um, first, uh, first things first is the experience of unboxing and putting it together. It is uh, extremely easy for... Now, I am, like you said, I am experienced with 3D printers. Right. I've been running a 3D printer for the better part of six or seven years now. Um, and I'm usually running a 3D printer almost every day. I'm always printing stuff. Uh, I really enjoy the hobby of, you know, I do a lot of, uh, kind of I use it mostly for tabletop gaming and mm-hmm. D&D and stuff like that. But uh, I've dipped my hands into, uh, you know, kind of functional 3D printing, printing knobs and Yep. Uh, you printed handles. one for me. Oh, that's for right. For my oven. Yeah, for your oven. Uh, and uh, different things like that. Hooks for hanging stuff in the house and all kinds of crazy stuff that you can do with 3D printers that you don't really think about until, uh, until you know, you're looking for something and somebody's like, hey, you could probably 3D print that. And you're like, oh, yeah, I guess I could. Right. Um, so 3D printing is awesome. And, and this uh, – the thing as you get into 3D printing is um, – it takes time. So uh, you have a certain uh, build volume that mm-hmm. the printer will use in different printers. There's all different manners of 3D printers or small ones to uh, huge 3D printers that will print cars. They even make a uh, quote unquote 3D printed houses now. Sure, sure. You know, yeah. print uh, concrete in forms and, you know, it's 3D printing a house. So 3D printing is a very vast, huge uh, kind of um, section of technology, and it's growing and growing and growing. Uh, Anchor has this one, and uh, the the special thing about this one is it it is uh, very quick. It is uh, uh, up to five times faster than most uh, desktop 3D printers, most consumer 3D printers. Um, And it's... uh, in my experience lives up to that, that claim Uh, something that, you know, would normally take me about eight hours to print uh, something that's, you know, roughly like a a five inch cube uh, with, uh, with the M five is going to be about three and a half hours. So you're, you're saving more than half the time in their printing and uh the way that they can do that is it it runs uh, hot. So um, different plastics. This is maybe getting a little bit into the weeds, but I, I want to try and make sure that if you're listening, you're understanding why this is so special. Um, 
most 3D printers, uh, depending on the plastic you're using to print with, have to be heated up to a certain temperature mm -hmm. to uh, extrude through the nozzle and lay down the uh, lines of print. Um, the M5, where uh, where most printers maybe would be a 200 degrees, this one will I'll heat things up to 450 degrees. Okay. And and so what it's doing, it's just it's it's melting uh, the plastic so much hotter to be able to move so much faster, um, and uh, and you still get the same great quality. You don't sacrifice quality for the speed. Sometimes with most uh, 3D printers, you can get them to go faster, but you're going to sacrifice, you know, maybe your your layer sizes. It's not going to be as detailed, or you might have a, uh, you know, some stringiness where wisps of plastic mm -hmm. that don't actually get adhered super well and and maybe some skips where this one looks like you printed it uh, on something that normally takes, you know, that eight to time. 10 yeah. hours uh, in, in like half that time. Um, so putting this thing together is uh, very simple. It, uh, it's really, uh, th it comes in three sections. It comes in a base, um, the, uh, the, stand for the print head uh which is your x and y axis mm -hmm. and uh or your your x and z axis and then your y is the build plate that goes back and forth and then the other piece that you put on is the uh hook that holds the filament spool okay so it's very very simple to put together there's just a, a couple cords to plug in a couple screws to put in and you're you're ready to go um you download a piece of software called a slicer. Mm -hmm. uh, Anchor has their own slicer um, that they recommend using. There are some third-party slicers you can use, um, but you will sacrifice a little bit of the um, extra features that the M5 has. Um, when you use their slicer, you get access to uh, the built-in camera that oh. will let you monitor okay. your print. Um, and you uh, lose, uh, you can lose some of that print speed because um, other slicers might have not might not have the right parameters that uh, the M5 needs to be able to do the speed of printing. Um, so this thing is very user friendly, uh, very easy to set up. I actually, when I set mine up, um, I had a little bit of a problem initially setting it up. It would um, it started up. I was able to run through a software update that was over the air. It, you know, it notified me, Hey, there's a software update. Would you like to download it? After I got it connected to Wi-Fi, it, it downloaded it wirelessly and just did the update. Uh, but then I was having a problem with uh, a motor moving. It wasn't moving. So I, I reached out to our contact and uh, said, Hey, I'm having this problem. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. They got back to me within the day, said, hey, I reached out to our tech support. I'll let you know as soon as uh, they tell me. And by the next morning, I had a solution, and that solution worked. Nice. It's very easy to do. And it's been running great ever since. Okay. Um, so they have a lot of great um, tutorials, a lot of great, uh, no a really great knowledge base on their website. And um, this is a very... Uh, if, if this is going to be your first 3d printer, it's going to be a very good experience for learning 3d printing because, uh, and one, it probably will spoil you because it is so much faster than other 3d printers that, um, if you go away from this, you're going to have to kind of relearn print timing. It's going to take a little bit longer than it, what you'd be used to with the M5, um, it still, to me, is uh, kind of blows my mind how fast it is. So that you mentioned, like, if this is your first mm -hmm. 3D printer, it's interesting to note or worth noting that this is Anchor's first yes. time sticking their toe in this yeah. water. This is a company who historically does, like, phone accessories. Yep. So for them charging to charging blocks and charging yeah. bricks and things like that. And yeah, they, they kind of stepped into this world and 
I, I mean, it feels like they've hit a, a home run. Um, now, there are a couple things that uh, aren't as great. Uh, one of them being is that slicer that they provide. Uh, the slicer works as far as you, you put your uh, STL file in there and it will slice it up into slices. So a 3D printer prints things in layers and that's how, and they call those slices and that's how you get your full 3D print. Right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The, uh, the slicer for the M5 is, uh, is good. It, it will slice uh, a file no problem. It's missing a, a little bit of those um, maybe just added features that uh, make um, – there's like uh, – I don't know the right way to say this. It's just a better experience. Maybe it, it's not a needed thing, but some things that I would – uh, maybe like to see as a better uh, copy and paste feature. Okay. Because uh, right now you have to select an item and then um, then you copy it. And you can't just uh, keep copying. Uh, you can keep copying, but it just copies in place. Um, and then there's not a button to kind of arrange your um, your different models on the print bed virtually oh right so you kind of have to spread things out manually mm. um, so that takes a little bit of time and then in spreading things out manually there are um, arrows for moving uh you know left and right and up and down um whereas other slicers you can just click and drag an object somewhere else and it'll move it around so a couple of those little features that i think probably could come through on a software update and mm -hmm. be totally fine. Um, but it's missing some of those. If you are used to 3d printing, the slicer is missing a, a couple of those features that, you know, most, most slicer software has. Um, this also can be paired with an, uh, an anchor app um, where you can log in uh, with your account that you set up. And you can actually view with that camera that comes standard on the M5. You can actually view your prints in real time to see how they're printing. Oh, nice. Where normally in most other printers, you're setting up a GoPro or something separate. To keep an eye on it. Um, this has that built in. And then also it has the ability that it will auto record a time lapse video for you. So you okay. can then share that time lapse video on a social media platform yeah. or on your website for customers to kind of see, you know, this is how this print happens. Or the new the new series of uh, characters we've created are rolling out. Right, and here's, here's a video to a share video of the of the time lapse of them being created. Like, and that's all baked into the software, and that's all comes with it. It's not it's not an extra feature or anything like that, um, and that works great. Um, so yeah, over, overall, I'm very, very impressed with this printer. Okay, uh, it is, um, it is a, uh, it was ambitious for them. It, yeah, you know, I, I remember when the Kickstarter rolled out, and a, a lot of people were like, "Anchor, th is this the same company that did this?" And yeah, you stay know, in your lane, bro. Are you yeah, sure? Uh, yeah, and it was, it was claiming five times faster than most yeah. other three D printers, and it's like. Hey, this this is your first time. We'll wait to see. Hopefully, this is pretty bold stuff here. Um, but I mean, man, they delivered, and the build quality. A lot of the uh, most of the pieces are metal, and yeah. uh, it, it's built like a tank. It holds up well, uh, and you know, it just it just works out of the packaging. There's really not much to fiddle with. It does an auto leveling. It does an auto homing. Uh, the way you load and unload the filament works really well. Uh, it's just a lot of they got they got ninety eight percent of the things right. Oh wow! Okay. And, and uh, it's it's really nice. It's really nice to see. It looks cool. It's got this. It's kind of this gunmetal with green accents and stuff. It's it's a cool looking machine. It looks uh, a little bit more modern design. Yeah, you that know. as I'm looking at the website and I'm looking at this, some of the other 3D printers I've seen seem very kind of like 
Yep, that looks like the inside of something. Like, yeah, it looks that's, like a robot. Yeah. Do, this looks kind of like a, a cool tech appliance. Right. Yeah. It, I wouldn't be, yeah, this wouldn't look out of place sitting right. in an office. No. Now, one thing I will say is because it runs so fast and runs so hot, you have to have some compensation for that in a fan. Mm-hmm. This thing is not super quiet. Oh, okay. So it's not loud. It's not like you can still talk over it and it's not a uh, distraction as far as, uh, you know, having to talk louder yeah. or, or not be able to hear somebody if they're saying something to you, but it is noticeable. You'll notice it's in the room because you will hear it's, it's uh, similar to, you know, if you're sitting at, with your laptop and the fan on your laptop well, I was kicks gonna, on. I was going to ask like, with a robot vacuum running, yeah, in the room, it's 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 a little bit louder than that, even. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, you'll notice that, but it's not. Uh, I don't think that's a. It's not enough to say eh, don't buy this. Sure, it's just something to know because it's it's running so fast because it it's using the temperature at at such a high temperature. Uh, it the fan is always running. Um. So that's something to notice. Uh, but yeah, overall, it's uh, the the Kickstarter units, uh, I think, have been delivered at this point and and retail rolls out here really, really soon. Yeah. As of uh, recording this, it shows the pre-order begins on October 24th. Yep. And so you're looking at uh, less than four days from today. Yeah. Uh, so the pricing on this uh, Kickstarter says the initial pre-order was 429 Yeah. And then the eventual retail will be seven fifty nine. Yeah. How do you feel about that? So seven fifty nine for what this printer does, uh, I would say the build volume. I don't know if you can pull that up real quick. I, I don't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head. Okay. Of of what size the bed is. Um Oh yeah, it did I did have that up there. Um print volume, yeah. 235 by 235. Yeah, 235 by 235 by 250. Uh, that is a very standard size. Okay. Um, at 750, there are printers that will do a little bit bigger build volume for less money and probably give you the same quality, but they're not going to be as fast. Okay. They're not going to have that camera built in so for time lapse and real-time monitoring. They're probably not going to be an auto bed leveling system. Um, so there's a lot of uh, features that come with more expensive printers than 750, uh, but uh, for it, it's it. This is an interesting printer, I think, because for this price point, you're getting a lot of high end features at a kind of mid range price point. Okay. Um, so it's like a junior flagship kind of almost experience. it feels like yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to see I would like to see the bill volume slightly bigger um, but this uh, for for the speed I mean really because it cuts I mean you're talking if, if you're somebody that sells 3d prints yeah um, you can print something three times on this machine that you would normally take one time to print on another machine. Yeah. So just the amount of volume you can pump out with this thing. Right. It's worth that money. Sure. If you're going to be using it for a business or something like that. Now, if you're just using it for hobby, if you, uh, if, if you don't really care about how fast it goes, yeah, you might be able to save some money and get a, a comparable printer. That's going to be, just as good of a quality you're just not going to get some of those uh nice nice features those extra features okay um but yeah for 750 for this i think it's it's a great price uh and it's really a really impressive first uh showing for anchor and uh a couple updates to their slicer and i think it's it's going to be really hard for anybody to not want this um, for the speed alone. Cool. So that's the Anchor Make M5. M5, yep. All right. Thank you, Luke. No problem. All right. That's going to do it for this episode of the podcast. Thanks for listening. 
We appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, feedback, concerns, comments, anything, shoot us an email at podcast at androidguys.com. We'd love to hear from you one way or the other. Uh, Luke, if someone wants to get a hold of you, how do yeah. they do that? Uh, I am on Instagram and Twitter at Luke Gall, G-A-U-L. And I'm on Instagram at Scott Webster and Twitter as SWebster77. Until next time, thanks for listening. See ya.